during the last nine months, students from all over the world have been working hard to create, build, and impact our future. Together with our sponsor companies, the students have battled through research, wicked problems, and open-ended complex questions that do not always have a straightforward solution. Through the cycle of learning, exploration, and discovery, all of us collaborate in this journey that brings innovation, new ideas, and solutions to a better world. Supported by their corporate partners and led by passionate coaches, professors, and each other, the teams have put all their efforts to go from a wicked, ill-defined challenge to a new and human-centered, innovative solution that aims at being viable, feasible, and desirable. Sugar Network brings all these ingredients together, and each university partner carries with them a unique talent generation. Here we practice human-centered design that starts by putting the human in the center of our challenge. And for that, the teams had to go through extensive interviewing, research and ideas, numerous prototypes and testing, as well as failures, which led them to a better understanding of their mission. Our goal is to bring innovation to our partners and to educate the future leaders of tomorrow for a better and more empathetic world. Join us and let's celebrate this milestone, connecting industry and students to create a real impact. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good midnight, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the first ever Sugar Cloud Expo. My name is Sushi Suzuki. I come from the Kyoto Institute of Technology in Japan and very honored to be the MC for the first time zone session, Nimbus. So let's get started. So I'm sharing my screen currently. All right, so welcome to the first Cloud Expo hosted by the Sugar Network. As you may know, the Sugar Network is a network of universities that work together with companies to develop new products, new innovations, new services. And for the projects you're about to witness today, the students have been working very hard for nine months. And for most projects, teams from two different universities around the world collaborated together. This year, we are 26 universities strong and every year we're growing. So our story this year began in uh, Hefei, China, where we had the global uh, kickoff workshop at the University of Science and Technology, China. And this is really where the teams met for the first time, on, uh, learned about the pro projects that they were about to challenge and really started collaborating together. After that, the students went back to their own home institutions like here in Sangalan, uh, where they were supported by their teaching teams, their coaches, their teaching assistants, um, and really started working on the projects while being at distance with their project members. They were got their researching, getting insights, getting uh, knowledge from their users, prototyping, testing them, showcasing them, and oftentimes also failing in their initial ideas only to get the knowledge to really try something different and something better. And of course, testing their prototypes with users as well in many different unique and interesting ways, let's say. And also because we are distributed, we were collaborating online. I can see here that we're actually using Skype, but I think we all now know and understand how wonderful Zoom is. And when the coronavirus hit, we did not stop. Everything moved online, but we discovered and come to love and maybe take a little bit Zoom and had classes online. This is from my university at the Kyoto Institute of Technology. And that brings us to today, the Cloud Expo, the celebration of all the projects that have been completed over the last nine months. So traditionally, this event has been hosted in San Francisco, where we would actually all fly in, come together, and present on stage in a setting like this. Or have uh, booths like this where the students would bring their prototype and showcase it. Unfortunately, we aren't able to get together physically this year, but one of the great things that have come out of having the Cloud Expo online is that we have been able to scale it up to a scale that we've never seen before. So as you know, the event is going to be going on for another 12 hours starting now. We did a count a couple of days ago on how many people have signed up from different countries, and we have hit a thousand across 37 countries. 
And just for the fun of it, I kind of mapped out where all the people have signed up from. And here is the map. As you can see, we have covered every continent. And you can safe to say that the sun never sets on the Cloud Expo. So as you know, today's event is separated into three time zone events named after clouds, Nimbus, Cirrus, and Stratus. And here I'm calling it the, let's say, Cloud Expo standard time, where right now is pretty much hour zero, um, since you all are coming from different time zones. And we are separating this event into three four hour time zone blocks, each featuring different teams and different projects. So if there is a team that you really want to check out, be sure to check them out. And of course, this information is also available on the Sugar Cloud official website as well. In addition to the team presentations, there are going to be other things as well, but we also have fantastic keynote speakers in each sessions. And I will introduce ours in a bit. Um, so if there are people you want to listen to or see what they have to say, please join those sessions as well. So let's jump into time zone event Nimbus. For this, I'm going to explain the schedule along with the features that are available on uh, this hop-in platform that we are currently using, which is the stage, sessions, networking, expo, and you should be seeing these. I'm hoping I'm pointing the right way. Um, oh, no, sorry, this way. You should be seeing them over here on the icons. And these are really the different areas of the hop-in platform. And as an extension, this um, cloud expo that you can jump into. So right now we're at 005 or so, and we are at the welcome and keynote session on the main stage. And if you're able to hear me, you found the right place. This is the main stage. After this, we will be having the team presentations here as well. And at the end of the Nimbus time zone event session, we're going to be having a panel discussion with our own Christine Tong from Swinburne University of Technology with an all-star crowd of Marcus Nordberg from Idea Square CERN, Ching Tian from Indigenous Consulting at PwC, Katya Chimmel from Mindshake, and Stephanie Divers Russo from the National Bank of Australia. So it's coming from all around the world, and they're going to be talking about innovation in global teams. So after, um, in addition to the stage, we have what we have called the sessions, which is the tab right after these um, sessions on this side. And uh, what these sessions are, are basically um, video conferencing rooms where you can actually jump in and start interacting with the teams so that the teams that presented in this time zone event will be hosting for an hour their interactive Q&A sessions, which are sessions where you can jump in and ask questions, more in-depth questions to the presentations that you may have heard. And don't worry if you're too shy and don't want to voice your question, or if you happen to be in pajamas, your birthday suit or whatever, there you can also ask the questions in chat and then the students will try to answer those as well. Following the interactive Q&A sessions with the teams, we have what we call the sugar bar. And this is more of a informal lighthearted session that um, Niels Feldman from the Call Zero Institute of Technology is hosting. And I understand the first session is going to be about food um, with different people jumping in. So those are the sessions. Be sure to check them out after the main stage. Uh, another feature that Hopin allows for, or the Hopin uh, platform offers, is called networking. And they're really trying their best to try to emulate, simulate the real world uh, event on real world events like this on the virtual platform. And one of the things you can do is talk to other participants. Well, that's what the networking session is for. This is what the interface looks like when you click on networking and start go or start. I don't know what it says. Um, you will be randomly matched with someone who is also in the networking tab trying to meet people. So you can kind of think of it as like a speed session, a speed dating session. And you have a maximum of three minutes that you can talk to this person who's also here at the event. And if you want to connect with this person, you can just click on the connect and the hop in platform will automatically share contact info so that you can follow up later. So that's the networking session. Last but not the least is the expo tab. Um, the expo is kind of our version of the virtual boosts for this year is where students um, can demonstrate and show their projects, prototype, the things they have built. So when you click on the expo, you will see the list of all the projects that have been completed this year. 
And by clicking through to it, you can also, oh, sorry, this is what the uh, page looks like. And when you click on one of these teams, you can click through to it to get to their website that they've built. So if you missed the presentation on stage, don't worry, you can click through on the expo and find out more about each of the projects this way. So that's the schedule for the next four hours. Again, if you don't see it on screen, feel free to find it um, on the Sugar Cloud official website as well. Now, a couple other features for the Hopin platform. The next one is the chat. So if you're looking at the main stage right now, you're probably noticing it on this side, a chat going, and there's already a lot of people who are posting there and you can see that's very nice. Um, this Hopin platform has a lot of chat features or let's say chats. Um, the one you're looking at right now is most likely the main stage chat, which is also shared with the event. In addition to that, each session that you can jump into, the Q&A session with the students, that will also have its own chat screen. And each expo booth will have its own chat screen as well. And we've set it up so that for at least the time session that the students present, there should be someone in each of these chat sessions to answer your questions. So if you get lost or if there are questions you want to ask the teams, feel free to ask on a chat session. There are also people from the Sugar Network who are looking at the chat session and can help you if you get lost in this hop-in platform as well. Now, the most important part about the chat, or I like to say the third greatest cultural contribution of Japan after sushi and Pokemon, and maybe karaoke, is emojis. I, did you know that was Japanese? Um, so, when we traditionally do this on stage, after each presentation, everyone can clap and cheer on the teams. Unfortunately, when we do this virtually, that is missing, that element, because you can't really clap back at the teams. Threat not, emojis here for the rescue. So there are actually ways you can just easily put emojis on the chat. I'm sure you're seeing some of the people on the chat doing it already. If you are on a Mac, if you hold Command, Control, and Spacebar, there should be a menu that comes up with a lot of the different um, chat options, uh, emoji options. And same with Windows, if you hit the Windows and semicolon or the full stop or period button, you should see an emoji um, selection as well. So if you want to cheer the teams on or uh, give some emotions and share it with everyone in the crowd, please feel free to use the emojis. In fact, we really want to see an energetic chat as we go into the presentations. Last but not the least, a little technical recommendation. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that you're joining us with uh, Firefox or Google Chrome. These are the two recommended browsers for the hop-in platform. And if you happen to be using a mobile device like Android or iOS, there is a chance you may not be getting the full features that hop-in is able to offer. I understand it's especially limited for iOS. So if it's possible, we suggest that you get your laptop or your desktop and use these browsers to join um, our session, our Cloud Expo today. So enough technicalities, let's get right to the keynote. I'm happy to announce that today, not only we not only have one, but two members of Allianz who is um, joining us today. Some of you may know Allianz. Um, they're one of the world's largest financial services company from Germany. And while most of you may know them for their insurance and your soccer, if you're soccer fans, you may know them for the Allianz Arena where Bayern Munich plays. They have done many, many different things beyond just that. And I'm happy to announce that um, we have Renato Wagner, who's <coughs> Renato Wagner, who's on the member of the board of management. And over the last year, she has been very active in growing the Allianz business in Asia. And a fun fact, she actually has a theoretical mathematics background. And also we have um, Birgit Kunik, who is the head of Allianz Digital Health, who's going to be talking to us about the, um, their activities and insights from their digital health activities, as well as the innovation that Allianz have created over the last 130 years. So we will have a Q&A session after the talk I will be monitoring that session. So if you're listening to this and if you're interested in asking questions, please put your questions on the chat. I will grab as many as possible and jump in the session and have a conversation with them or a Q&A session with them. So without further ado, please welcome Renata Wagner and Birgit 
Kuni. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Sushi, and thank you very much for, for having us this afternoon, this morning, or this evening, wherever you might be. It's a big, big, big pleasure to be with you today, and greetings from Munich. So I have to say, you know, before we, uh, we start, first of all, I hope that all of you and your families are healthy and safe in these uh, tricky times, let me put it that way. Um, I'm very, very pleased to be here with you, with Birgit, uh, together to talk about Allianz and the 130 years of innovation. And I hope that, you know, by the end of this talk, you will see that innovation is something that is deeply embedded in our DNA. And I, I would like to put it a little bit into the context and then Birgit will share obviously the latest innovations that we do in particular in, in, in the health space. Um, as a little bit of background, as uh, Sushi mentioned, you know, my name is Renate Wagner. I'm a member of the Board of Management of Allianz since January 1st. And as part of this role, I am responsible for human resources, but also for mergers and acquisitions, for legal, for compliance, and for data protection uh, for, for Allianz. And before I joined Allianz, I also um, was active in the financial industry um, uh, at KPMG in Zurich Insurance and some other banks. Um, let me start to talk a little bit about Allianz and the, the, the company as such so that we uh, position the topic of innovation uh, a little deeper. So as a company, you know, we have 147,000 employees worldwide and we offer a wide range of insurance and fund products to more than 100 million customers in more than 70 countries. We are a market leader in the German market, but we do have quite a strong international presence. Like we are worldwide in property casualty, the largest, the, the leading insurer globally. Also in, in life and health, which is our second largest uh, segment, we are among the top five companies globally. And in the third pillar, asset management, the same holds true. We are worldwide among the leading institutions. Last year, um, we achieved 142 billion in revenues at Allianz Group. And from an asset management perspective, you know, our third party assets reached 1.7 trillion assets under management last year. Just to put a little bit, give you a little bit of a flavor of some numbers. And of course I have more because as Sushi mentioned, my background is mathematics, so I love numbers. So on the next slide, you will see a few more um, of these numbers. We, as a, as a company, you know, we achieved last year 11.9 billion in operating profit. And the important thing and the message I wanna get across because it, it goes into the direction also of what is part of our DNA and why is innovation so important for us. One of the key elements that we stand for is we do not only measure success in terms of financial success. And we do not only look at success in terms of operating profit or revenues, but for us, it is equally important to look at what we refer to the health KPIs. And health KPIs, we have basically three. One is we look at what we refer to the, as the IMIX. The IMIX is the so-called inclusive meritocracy index. And the inclusive meritocracy index measures our progress towards becoming an inclusive, fully inclusive company and the, the, uh, arriving at inclusive meritocracy um, it, as, as, uh, globally. And that is basically a measurement for the leadership in this company and the corporate culture in this company. And the, the, the score we achieved last year was 73% and it has been significantly increasing in the last years. And you know, obviously our target is to increase even further. But the second element that we look at from a health perspective is how satisfied are our customer with us? And we measured that with a KPI called the net promoter score, which you see here. And what this tells you, the 70%, this means that 70% of our businesses outperformed their local markets last year with regards to customer satisfaction. And the third element in terms of health KPIs that is very important for us and that we feel quite proud about is that we are ranked the number one in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, which means we are leading the leading responsible insurer, investor and employer. And it highlights our commitment to shaping a low carbon economy 
and creating more inclusive communities, as I mentioned before. So above and beyond, you know, these, um, th this, this context, there are a couple of what I would call fun facts, uh, which you might or might not have heard about. I mean, you probably, most of you have heard about uh, uh, Allianz and you associate Allianz with, with one of the insurance arms or with asset management. But did you know that we tend to sponsor upcoming technologies and innovative sports? And we are therefore a, a partner of the Drone Racing League and provide both private and commercial drone insurance products. Maybe you know that Allianz often insures Hollywood and Bollywood movies. We insured, for example, the 24 James Bond production. Did you know that sustainability is on top of our agenda and we, are therefore, we therefore support sustainable motorsports by being a partner of the fully electric car racing Formula E championship? Did you know that we offer financial solutions to more than 49 million emerging consumers in Africa, Asia, and Latin America? You will have seen or heard about the recent SpaceX shuttle launch. We as Allianz are the leading specialist in space insurance. And we celebrated our 100th birthday as an aviation insurer in, in, in the year 2015. Did you know that we are, uh, we are insurer of the last three buildings to hold the title of the world largest, the, the world tallest? It was the Petronas Towers in Malaysia, the 101 in Taipei, and also the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. So Allianz insured all of them. Did you know that we have our own Allianz Center for Technology, where we provide damage analysis and loss prevention services for our global clients, partners, and colleagues for more than 85 years? In this center, we have conducted thousands of crash tests since 1980 to improve road safety. And did you know that we are one of the insurers of the supposedly most famous ship of all times, the Titanic? So these are a couple of uh, fun facts I thought I would like to share with you because they might or might not be so well, well known. But now back to the topic of innovation. If you ask me, you know, what drives innovation and what drives the success? Let's take a step back. Our company, Allianz, was founded in, in 1890. So this means we have been around for 130 years. And in these 130 years, we were quite successful, be it in the property casualty insurance, be it in the life and health insurance, or also in asset management for quite some time now. But is it coincidence that we were su so successful in the last 130 years? Well, I mean, you might ask the question, how did you manage to do this? How did you manage to achieve this despite the environmental and the societal changes and despite the many financial crises along the way, starting in, 20, in 1929, uh, thinking about the 2008 financial crisis or the pandemic crisis that we have at the moment? Well, let me tell you what has contributed to us being stronger than ever after 130 years. First and foremost, it is the continuous innovation. Innovation is deeply embedded in, in our DNA. And I'd like to share a story with you that hopefully shows you that this is not a new trend or something. Innovation has been around in this company straight from the beginning. And at, at Allianz, we are very, very happy, I have to say, and also proud of early adoption of, of technology. So let me tell you this, this, this little story, and for that I have to travel back uh, a little bit in the history of Allianz, back to our roots. It was in the year 1890, where two gentlemen, Karl Thieme was one of them and Wilhelm Fink was the other one, decided that insurance needed innovation. And they raised 4 million mark in capital. Today that's equivalent of 100 million US dollars in current value and they founded Allianz. Now their approach was right, and it was right on target, and business grew very, very quickly, so that a few years later, they had to take a first step towards higher process efficiency, and they bought typewriters. Mechanical calculators and tabulators 
had been in use for a while. And in 1926, Allianz proudly entered the world of data processing. The fast growth of low price insurances made automation a must. And vacuum tube based tolerance tabulators were introduced. From now on, clerks no longer had to copy totals from calculators into files. The machine would do it for them. Operating with punch cards and with much higher speed and accuracy. In 1956, and with more than 10 million policies at the time on their book, Allianz management took another bold step. As the first insurance company in Europe, they bought the IBM 650. And this one is the one that you can see on this picture. On this picture, you see together with the gentleman called Hans Willi Schaefer, who was the head of, of our data center back then. Now with that background, it is not surprising that our oldest customers are over 110 years old. And they have been insured with us for 75 years. Their policies have been processed by vacuum tube operated punch card machines, by magnetic core, core processors and modern silicon based RAMs. Just imagine how much technological change we have squeezed in one single lifetime. And this is just one example of the continuous innovation we have been driving forward at Allianz over the past 130 years. And I would love to have time to tell you a lot more about the innovation of our business model, the innovation of our products and the innovation you know, of the, the sponsorships that, that we drive. But that's for, for another time. And Birgit will highlight some of the innovations in one particular area, namely in the health space. But be, before we go there, you know, I, my core belief is that continuous innovation is not enough to remain successful over such a long period of time. What you also need is you need the people who drive it. People who come up with these ideas and bring them to life. People such as Carl Thieme, who founded Allianz back in 1890, but also many others along the way who, with their open mindset, and with their creativity and with their boldness and with their motivation have made it possible that we are where we are today. And one of those creative and open-minded and bold people is Birgit König. She is revolutionizing our health insurance sector. And I'm very, very happy to have her here with me today to tell you a little bit about the innovations she and her team are driving. So Birgit, over to you. Thank you, Renate. Uh, welcome, everyone. Just uh, very briefly, only one slide from my side on innovation. Innovation is your theme. And I thought we share three important theses that we have built a company around. First of all, is innovation is a mindset. Now, what does that basically mean is you have to take risks. Good is never good enough is a, uh, one of our values. Uh, we believe we have to aim high, we have to reach for the stars, otherwise we do not generate the energy someone needs to uh, be innovative. And it's all going back to um, a um, sentence in, in John F. Kennedy's Man to the Moon speech. You will remember that he said, we choose to go to the moon not because it's easy, but because it's hard, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. That's exactly the point. Uh, we, by definition, only embark on projects that matter to the world, that uh, we are passionate about, on projects that no one has done before, dared to even tackle before. And it really nicely works. It's quite of a change typically for people new in our organization. I say, you know, that is all undoable, what we propose. And three, six months later, say, gee, who would have thought it actually works? A second important ingredient to innovation is to understand, we believe that innovation happens at the interfaces. You, in your processes, put together uh, teams from different universities, from different backgrounds, and you can feel 
how much of a difference that makes. Of course, we also take people from very different backgrounds. What is also important for us though, is that we understand that we are a small organization and there's a world of innovation around us. So we need to tackle, to tap into that world of innovation. So the first thing actually we teach everyone is how to Google extremely well, Google like a pro. The core assumption we are sharing here is that every problem has been solved before and you can find it in Google. Of course, you do not find the problem just as is, but you find something that's very similar. So we teach our people in formal trainings, but as well as in daily operations and coaching around finding analogies. It's always a question, here's a problem that we are facing. Who might have had a similar problem? Where would I find it? And uh, then actually go for it, Google. A uh, big difference for people who come to, to us from universities, because at universities, of course, there's always the assumption that your thesis is your own intellectual property and you're not cheating left and right. Now, we believe that it is not cheating to get inspiration from the outside world, and we are very rapidly uh, progressing on this one. My last one is beauty matters. Now you would not have ex expected something like that in a, um, a talk on what makes innovation work. We are totally clearly, um, uh, we have lots of pr uh, proof that it actually is true. When uh, we saw the intro video for um, this day from Sushi, um, again, what you saw is lots of pretty bare rooms, uh, lots of untidy spaces, and you have the typical open space environment, which is a little cluttered, it's a little noisy, and it's certainly not beautiful. As you can see from the background, it looks different in our offices. Um, and there is a scientific logic to it. It is when you want to be creative, you need both. You need focus, attention, and you also need to let your mind wander. You need to daydream. Um, daydreaming actually requires that when you look up from your screen, um, you know, you, you gaze at something that makes you daydream. And that is rarely actually the cluttered white desk. So therefore what we've done here is we've um, asked uh, well-known artists to uh, furnish our office with real art, with different kinds of inspirational objects so that people actually um, do do start daydreaming. And we can say that uh, now in the corona situation where we are not in the office normally, um, that people actually say, you know, I can, can't think anymore in a different way. It is so much more worthwhile to live in an office that is beautiful than to live at home. And you would assume that living at home is as good as it gets. But um, really, it is not exactly the same. So my six pence on how do you uh, be innovative. And with that, back to uh, Renate. Renata, I think you're muted right now. Could you unmute yourself? Apologies. Ah, thank you so much. I apologize. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, is it better? Okay. Okay, super. Sorry, thanks for reminding me. So, as I mentioned, uh, you know, being mindful of time, I want to talk a little bit about the second part, which I mentioned as a key success factor, which goes hand in hand with the innovation, namely to have the right people. And I like, I'd like to, to speak about a recent innovation we launched in the, in the people space just three days ago. It's sort of hot off the press. It's called hashtag lead. But before we go there, let me give you a little bit of a flavor of our people at Allianz. As I mentioned before, we have 147,000 employees globally. 51% of them are women. And if you look at the managers at Allianz, 38% are female. The average age of our employees is 40.6 years. And if you look at our headquarter here in Munich, for example, we have 72 different nationalities here in the headquarter, which shows you that diversity is something that we value extremely highly. And one of the reasons why, we do it for many reasons, but one of the key reasons is we, because we believe that diversity drives innovation. In addition to that, we are experiencing significant demographic changes around the globe. 
which leads to a significant workforce rebalancing. For the first time in the history of this company, we have five generations under one umbrella, from baby boomers to Generation Z, and we have already 35% millennials and Gen, Gen Z in our company. And of course, you know, they, they strongly, the share of millennials strongly increases every single year. And that has an impact, a significant impact on our leaders. We have 18,000 leaders. And of course we acknowledge as a big mega trend that the needs of the newer, the younger generations are very, very different. They, they look for, you know, a lot stronger for a purpose. They look a lot stronger for things like diversity, ethics, mobility, work-life balance, but also for leaders as coaches. So we want, in response to this, we wanted to equip our leaders, all of all 18,000 of them, with the new kinds of skills that are required in the modern world. And in our mind, you know, these are both technical skills but also emotional intelligence skills. And that is what hashtag lead is about. And that just like on my last slide to share this with you, because as I mentioned before, in my mind, it goes hand in hand with innovation and it does drive uh, innovation dramatically. So hashtag lead is something, as I mentioned, that we launched three days ago, and it is here for all our people leaders in Allianz, regardless of their level, their experience, their location, whatever, everybody will embark on a continuous learning journey to attain what we call the Allianz Leadership Passport. The journey of this passport consists of self-led gamified learning on a digital platform, on the hashtag lead platform, which we created. Plus, obviously there are deep dive options on, on specific leadership topics. The gamified experience is unlike anything that we have done or seen in Allianz before. It's a completely new platform, a completely new experience, which is based on a mission impossible type of adventure. And it is fun, it is interactive, and above all, it is an engaging learning experience. The passport covers both technology-focused IQ skills, as well as people-focused emotional intelligence skills, because we do believe that these two go hand in hand. And it, it covers things like, you know, uh, change management, agile leading, obviously, you know, digital leadership, IT literacy, but also strengths-based leadership, inclusive leadership, and, and topics like that. So we are very, very proud that we launched it three days ago with enormous success. And obviously, you know, this will not be a one-off element in Allianz, but it will be a continuous element. So once our 18,000 leaders get their passport after finishing, you know, this, this experience, uh, it will be a continuous journey. So we, they have to maintain their passport. So every two years they have to update it. And, and we do that with our intelligent learning platform, Degreed. With the help of artificial intelligence, Degreed uses your skill level as well as your activity and your interests to personalize and recommend the right content, content for you, resulting in a feed of personalized recommendations every day based on millions of courses, of videos, of articles, of books, of podcasts, and from thousands of the world's best resources to further upskill yourself. So we do all of this to help our leaders lead our business successfully into the future and lead it in an innovative manner. So this was what we wanted to share with you very briefly. We wanted to give you this short glimpse into who we are as a company, but also the key two success factors that we believe are important, which is innovation and having the right people to drive this innovation. And I hope you have seen the role that innovation played in Allianz for the last 130 years of our existence. So thank you very much for listening. And with that, I'll open up the floor for any questions that you might have. Thank you, Renata and Birgit. That was fantastic. Um, so we are actually a little bit over time. I've, I've been looking at the chat screen and I haven't seen a question yet. Apologies. Oh, uh, it's okay, that was great. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit selfish. I, plan I have many, many questions and I wanna ask one. Since you've talked about, and we hear a lot about how innovation is about taking risks, obviously. Yes. You guys 
are the experts in risk management as an insurance company. How do you guys think of risk and what's too big of a risk versus what's too small of a risk in order to have innovative results? That's an excellent question. Brigid, would you like to talk about it? Sure. Um, no, uh, thank you for that one. Very simple. When it's, we would take very large risks, extremely large risks, if we can manage them. We are in the business of managing risks, so we are not risk averse at all. The only thing is we do not gamble. And meaning managing risk and gambling is a huge difference, meaning we need to be able to understand the risk to actually uh, simulate the risk, simulate potential outcome, and do a calculation based on that. That's all. And I would add, add to that, you know, I think that's, that goes back to the core backbone of who we are. I mean, we are, you know, the, 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 the people whom we, whom we recruit really have exactly this expertise, which helps us to, to display exactly what Birgit mentioned, to distinguish between gambling and be, between taking conscious risks. And we have as Allianz, obviously every year, we define what is our risk appetite based on, 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 on this assessment. And then within that risk appetite, that's how we operate. And as, as Birgit mentioned, you know, to the extent we understand the risks and we believe we can manage the risks, that's, you know, what is acceptable to us. Great, thank you. And I guess as a company, I mean, you insured the Titanic and you've still exist as a company, so you clearly have managed the risk. I would love <laughs> to keep talking more, but I've been informed that we are behind time. We need to move to the presentation. So. Renata, Birgit, thank you so much for joining us and please enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Bye. All right, let's now move to the final presentation, the moments you've been waiting for to see all the innovations that the students have been creating.